Ladies and gentlemen, Smith and Smith. It doesn't sound great Soon you're starting to exaggerate You build yourself up in everyone's eye You help your career with a little white lie Your boss considers promoting you But he's just shooting it too You once knew the truth, but you can't remember Your friends all call you the great pretender You don't know what's black, you don't know what's white You don't know what's wrong, and you don't know what's right You may think your career has come to an end But you always get elected again I said don't let it get you down Down. A very special feature tonight. As part of our series on corruption in politics, we have convinced our guest, Mr. John Patterson, Member of Parliament for Canada North, to undergo a lie detector test. Thank you for agreeing to the test, Mr. Patterson, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate this opportunity to prove my honesty. Just for your own information, Mr. Patterson, whenever you say an incomplete or untrue answer into this microphone, the machine will signal like this. I see. Does this make you uncomfortable? <laughs> no. Why don't we start by you telling us your name and government position? Fine. My name is John Stanley Patterson, and I'm the Member of Parliament for Canada North. And where do you live? I live in the unspoiled, breathtaking panorama of God's country, which is the picturesque town of Whitehorse. <laughs> that is to say, I have a residence in Whitehorse. <laughs> I have an office in Whitehorse. I live in Ottawa. <laughs> All right. I have an office in Ottawa. I live in Los Angeles. <laughs> Mr. Patterson, is it true that you want to eliminate all tax exemptions? Yes. I believe everyone should pay taxes. <laughs> that is, everyone but the poor and infirm. <laughs> all right, everybody but me. This machine is starting to get to me. There's another area I have to investigate. You have been charged with having illicit romantic affairs with members of your staff. What's your response? Well, Anne, I'm not perfect. <laughs> but I have nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> All right. It happened once. A few times. But never with a married woman. That is... Never with an older married woman. <laughs> She's married? I can't believe it. Getting back to politics, Mr. Patterson, what objectives are you working toward during your term? Well, Anne, I would like to see this country become an example of fraternity, equality, and justice. To see each and every citizen achieve the highest standard of living on Earth. To set new limits in manufacturing and exports Mr. Patterson, would you plug the lie detector back in, please? Oh, I'm sorry. 
I must have hit it with my foot. This is the end of our show, and I'm sure many of you are very upset by Mr. Patterson's testimony. Please remember, however, that he does have a family that depends on him. That's true. I, I have a lovely wife. I have a wife. And I'm the father of six children. What does that mean? It probably means you aren't the father of all six. Good evening, everyone. All right. I'm the father of five children. Four. Well, surely three of them are mine. And I've been so good to her. trusted you can't be strong you can be bought but not for long when people find out you're on the take you'll be amazed at the money you'll make you've been exposed a political crook but everybody buys your book I said don't let it get you As I sit in quiet repose, my mind is oft-times clouded by the tragic environs of this worldly cloak. The war and pestilence and unending suffering of souls held forever in mortal bondage. The bittersweet affairs of the heart that end more in severance than in reverence. And yet, methinks, there is no burden harder to bear than my neighbor's dog. <laughs> And hairy, ugly beast, derived from an unknown lineage of hard teeth and easy virtue. A four-legged foghorn that sounds loudest at night. Landlord to a thousand fleas. It was a gift to my neighbor from a relative who was getting even for something. And they, in their wisdom, unleashed it on me. They trained it to go on my newspaper. They convinced it to choose my lawn as the final resting place for whatever it's eaten. <laughs> and I dare not step out through the front portal of my dwelling, for I will be met by wild eyes and bared fangs. <laughs> they say it will not bite. I answer, then I will not shoot. <laughs> they tell me it loves children, and I'm sure it has eaten a few. <laughs> they say it makes the neighborhood safe. From what? Smaller dogs? I would prefer smaller dogs. They tell me the dog is smart, and compared to them, it is. And the dog is an actor. When they give it a command, it pretends it's deaf. And I wish they would move. I do not have anything against the dog, nor do I have anything for it, and yet it seeks me out. This wet-nosed wonder surprises me as I bend over my garden. <laughs> this watchdog so full of ticks that alerts the town of the exact hour I am weaving up my driveway. It is part Labrador deceiver, part Irish shedder, part English sleep dog, and part Doberman pouncer. And most of it is well digger, a holy terrier. For I believe that every dog is placed on earth with a quota of holes to be dug, cars to be chased, trees to be irrigated, and neighbors to be harassed. Then, and only then, can it go to its reward in the hereafter. And as I sit in quiet repose, 
<laughs> it is comforting to know that I am helping this dog get to heaven. Now, if there was just some way to speed up the process. You're home. I've been home all day. Oh, yeah. Just playing with my train. See that? Cute, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, look at this. It's from New York. Williamsville, New York. Well, it's kind of exciting, eh? Somebody wants to become a Canadian. <laughs> They'll do anything, those people. I hope they're sending money. Smith and Smith, as an aspiring performer myself, I appreciate the many talents that you both have. Singing, writing, acting, hooting? Hosting. <laughs> what training? <laughs> I thought you'd seen this in our public private That's life. Right. <laughs> what training did you have to prepare you for this type of career? Matt Beerl, Williamsville, New York. What uh, train do we have to teach us to hoot? <laughs> well, I think most Canadians are natural hooters. <laughs> no, I think that uh, actually it is an advantage to be a Canadian because you're probably bored and uh, can therefore, when you get an opportunity to be not bored, you can do it very well. I can't believe you're saying this. Why? Because you're... <laughs> you're not the kind of person who puts down Canadians, and that was really a kind of a put-down. I'm just fooling around, though. Oh, I see. So nothing you say has any meaning well, at all. It's an American. Why should I care? Oh. <laughs> we have the kind of training that you can get only in this wonderful country. That's I'm right. sorry, sir. You're out of luck, unless you, of course, immigrate. <laughs> We have had no training at all, and nor are we likely to get any. This keeps up. We just goof around, and we enjoy ourselves. Don't we, hun? We do. Um, you two can have... No. If someone else has a letter or a question you want to ask, you know, just like Matt Beryl from Williamsville, just write to um, us, care of your station. We'll be glad to answer your letter for you. At this juncture, we wish to spotlight the ancient art of applied matrimony. A chance to take a highly speculative, behind-the-scenes look at the married life of famous people. And whom is our lucky couple tonight, Morang? Our lucky couple tonight, Stefan, is Mr. and Mrs. Ponce de Leon. Mr. and Mrs. Ponce de Leon. I'm Ponce de Leon, a man in search of truth. My exploring is never boring, I'm looking for eternal youth. We search the mountain, we search the mountain, hoping for a taste of that special fountain. Scratches from the bushes, bruises on our tushes, but still no bruise. But I just told her as she gets older She'll feel the same as me To be forever young, active and sporty To have an affair when you're 140 Leave cracks on the moon, wrinkles on the prune And just let me be All right, Mama, take it and run <laughs> As time goes by, no matter how hard you try You're gonna get older and you can't change that your pace will slow up, gray hairs will show up You're gonna get older and you can't change that You'll have no more of the trip to Florida It's time you accepted the truth And Sarasota won't help when I own her. It's no place to spend your youth You'll never be young again, that's for sure But you'll always be immature Let me tell you something, sweetheart And that's fine for you You 
can get old if you like But I'll go ahead and get a van with a bed A bright orange ten speed bike A tennis rack, a fish and reel A motorcycle, a snowmobile A boy among men, I'll be 19 again What will wardrobe supplied by Holly's. Hair by David Church Associates. Went last night to the office party. Didn't get home till awful late. The boss was drinking, winking Bacardi. His wife was drinking it straight. An accountant in the corner jacking up the figures. An operator sitting by the phone. A salesman and a stand making whoopee on the Xerox, we all took a copy home. The receptionist sitting by the TV screen with the best reception I've ever seen. It was out of sight, the office party last night. Some were dancing, some were singing, some just stood with their eyes kind of glazed. I caught my supervisor fooling in the closet, a great time to ask for a raise. A foreman from the factory checking out production, a pipe fitter showing off his tools. A registered nurse and a government inspector breaking all the safety rules. We started wailing about a half past five, but we shut her down when the cops arrived. And we didn't fight, it was just all right, it was out of sight. The office party last night. Necessary. What? I mean, okay, maybe his car was slightly blocking your spot. But did you have to yell at him? Yeah, I did. <laughs> the language, Al, the language. You should watch Sesame Street. F's not the only letter, you know. <laughs> and how do you think I feel? Standing out there beside you and you swearing like a trooper. Oh, shut up, Edna. Nobody even noticed you. <laughs> Mrs. Farnsworth in 308 was standing right out on her balcony. She's as deaf as a post. She can read lips. From 400 yards? You got a big mouth, Al. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I got a big stomach, too. And it's your job to put something into it. How romantic. Sounds like... You're loading a cannon. Okay, <laughs> what do you want? Well, first of all, I need another beer. I'll have a thick slice of corned beef, a few hash browns, and a big pile, pile of, of baked beans. beans. Yeah, that's right. And Al, that's what you've had every night for 27 years. So what? I like what I like. You've never tried anything else. What's this, the Pepsi challenge? Al, it's the same with the car. I mean, that thing in the parking lot would never have happened if we didn't take that car to work with us every day. Tomorrow, let's walk. Oh, now, there's a great idea, Edna. 
<laughs> well, put my supper in a paper bag, because we're going to have to leave now. <laughs> It'd be great, though. Two of us walking arm in arm down the highway all night. Then we'd work all day in the factory. We'd get to walk back home. Gee, she came up with a real dandy this time, Edna. Let me know if you want to go ahead on this. I'll sell the car and buy some shoes. I just thought, that what with the gas shortage and everything? Gas shortage? There's no gas shortage, Edna. Remember in the old days, they couldn't give the gas away. They had price wars, they'd clean your windshield, give you free glasses. Those were gimmicks. But this gas shortage thing's the best one they've ever come up with. They got us lining up, putting it in ourselves, paying through the nose, and glad to be getting it at all. There's no gas shortage, just a brain shortage. And that's where you come in, Edna. Al, you remember Aunt Polly from Boston? She can't stay here. That's final. She's your aunt, Al. An ant is a bug. She can't stay here. She's coming to visit us and your sister. She says she'd like to go and see Niagara Falls. Well, that's great. She can stay with my sister. Okay, then we'll drive her to the falls. What about the gas shortage, Edna? Why doesn't Aunt Polly walk to Niagara Falls? You'd expect a 73-year-old woman to walk to Niagara Falls and back. Who said and back? <laughs> oh, listen. If we're nice to Aunt Polly, then we can go to Boston and stay with her. And what is there in Boston that would be of any interest to me? Millions and millions of beans. <laughs> And you're worried about a gas shortage? Everybody.